Hey folks, Jackta here. Since the ending of the Trespasser DLC in 2015, a strong and clear motivation was set for the Inquisitor, the remnants of the Inquisition, depending on your choices, and the new hero in the next Dragon Age game. That being, should they attempt to redeem Solas or seek his demise? Now, whether an elven god can truly be defeated is uncertain. Look at Mafal for that instance. But the expectation was set very clear. The player's choice regarding Solas's fate must be resolved in the next Dragon Age. And it brings me so much joy today to say that Bioware have confirmed closure and a varied conclusion based on our choices for Solas's narrative in Dragon Age The Veilguard, vale which as a huge Sword of Ellen is something so, so many of us are ecstatic to hear. This comes directly from the developers who were interviewed by Game Informer's Wesley LeBlanc on his recent time at Bioware Edmonton, where one of the most fascinating topics he uncovered was Solas's role in the Veilguard vale and his ultimate conclusion in this game's story. And so today we are diving into the new bond Rook, our new hero, will form with Solas as the plot takes a different direction than previously expected. We'll also discuss the various endings Solas could have in my own speculative nature. Spoiler warning for those who do not want to know anything about the latest game and former details, this revolving around Rook, Solas's role and Solas's potential fate in the game. Otherwise, let's jump straight into this. Let's start by getting a bit more context on Solas's role in the story of the Veilguard. Vale and so when Wesley LeBlanc asked about Solas's role in the Veilguard vale story after his namesake was removed from the game's initial title, consultant Mark Dara mentioned that Veilguard vale is continuing the narrative of the Elven God storyline positively. He explains that the game will provide a satisfying conclusion to their diverse perspectives on Solas, whether players love him, agree with him, hate him, or want to harm him. Creative director John Eppler provided even more insights, revealing that Solas is not the straightforward villain one might expect from the initial hours of Veilguard. Vale Solas is portrayed with more complexity, as he sees himself as a tragic hero. He believes his actions, which the player had previously thwarted, were justified, and that the player's intervention was a mistake. Now trapped and unable to directly influence Fadus, Solas needs to collaborate with the player. And so Epler goes on to emphasise that this scenario now allows for a more nuanced relationship with Solas. In the prologue, Solas is literally trapped after Rook and companions thwart his attempt to destroy the Veil. Solas had been trying to move the Elven Gods Elganan and Gilanan to a new prison, but now they are free and causing havoc in Fadus. To stop them, Rook must work with Solas, or at least he his guidance. And lastly, John Eppler explains that the story begins like the final chapter of an earlier tale, with the player arriving just as Solas' plan to tear down the veil, which was hinted at in Trespasser DLC, is foiled. As the narrative unfolds, players will see Solas in a new light, noticing his similarities to Rook, and this is ultimately going to create a dynamic interaction where players can shape their relationship with Solas through their choices, either remaining suspicious or hostile style or finding common ground and building a different connection. With that article summarised there quite quickly, something I initially feared for the next Dragon Age game, and I've spent a lot of time on my channel talking about this, was how much the new hero had a say in this Inquisitor and Solas dynamic that was set up in Trespasser. Because despite what my Inquisitor in particular decided what they wanted to do with Solas at the end of Trespasser, my new hero, especially set 10 years after those events, may come completely disagree with the Inquisitor's choice and seek a completely different avenue, especially if they see themselves as stopping a genocidal god. However, in Dragon Age of Elgard, what I really, really appreciate and like is the fact that Solas is locked away in the Fade for a core part of this narrative and is now going to directly speak to Rook throughout the game, guiding them on their quest to defeat Elganan and Gilanan. And Rook also has a home base in the lair of the Dread Wolf, our new hub in the Fade that literally acted as Solas's base of operations. Rook is literally going to have such a tight-knit connection to Solas if they so desire. Dare I even say, even more closer than the Inquisitor, that being a romanced Lavellan. We are literally living with him rent-free in our minds, as well as living rent-free in his own Fade pad. Additionally, in line with learning so much about Solas's story and narrative and this dynamic relationship that 
we're going to build with him. In the Discord developer Q&A that happened last week, the developers teased that we may see what Sonas looked like when he had hair. This to me sounds like Rook is literally going to be able to see memories in the fade in our new hub of what Sonas did originally when rebelling against the elven gods, witnessing Mafal's death or the death of the titans that then led his rebellion and freeing slaves and then eventually sundering the elven empire, locking away the gods and creating the veil. Where Lavellan failed, which is quite a harsh word but to some extent she did, Rook, it sounds like, is going to get the full context to be able to make or have some say on how Solas's fate will go down. And this is all not to say that the Inquisitor still won't have full control of his fate, I just really appreciate that Rook is going to have equal amount while also gaining more context and seemingly is still separate from that romantic element. Unless uh, Bioware are going to add that with Rook 2? Could that be a possibility? I doubt it, but it will be certainly interesting. If that's Solas's role in Dreadwolf, he's going to help guide the plot. We're going to have him like Sam and Ryder in Mass Effect Andromeda, where he's giving us information, tidbits, plot direction, potential characters to meet. It'd be really cool if we could make Felisan untranquil and Felisan could help us out, for example. And whatever else Solas can help with alongside this plot to defeat Elganan and Gilanan. We have to now talk about what his actual fate could be in the Veil Guard. And before I jump in, to just straight up tinfoil speculation based on what we know so far. Patrick Weeks shared insights back in 2015 in an interview with Andy, my good buddy from Video Game Sophistry, and I think the details in this interview are highly relevant now. And so, just in regards to Solas's future and the future of Dragon Age, Patrick Weeks said that they think it's fantastic that people have emotionally engaged with Solas, and Patrick hopes they get a chance to explore that in future content. And addressing the future of Dragon Age after lead writer David Gader left, Patrick Weeks said, no plan survives the audience. We consider how fans react and what resonates with them. It's better to have people react angrily than to ignore things. Dave's future plans are fantastic, epic and heartbreaking. Our plan is to use that as a starting point. It won't be the story Dave would tell if he was here as lead writer, because it would just be a bad impersonation of Dave Gader. My goal is to put my own spin on the process. What Dave set in motion over three games is something that can endure. The idea is that no choice is really that easy and great events stem from human understandable motivations. And so just thinking about that and combining everything we've gone over together so far, I do have a few ideas on Solas's fate and how it may play out now depending on Rook's relationship that they can cultivate, all depending on your player choices with good old Mr. Dreadwolf. And so the first one is Rebirth. And this comes back to Inquisition, where in Solas's loyalty quest, all new faded for her, there was a hint at a different fate for Solas, or at least his outcome. If you've played the quest and done it the way that Solas would like you to do it, in terms of freeing his spirit friend, you'll have an idea of what I'm referring to here. But basically, the idea is, what if instead of Solas dying when defeated, he is reborn like his spirit friend Wisdom? This new Solas would be a fundamentally different person but he would still live on in a different regard. And this reborn Solas could actually settle down with Lavellan or realise that mass genocide isn't the best way to restore the Elven Empire. Instead, they might actually focus on helping modern elves rebuild and move forward rather than being stuck in the past. This approach would be somewhat of a happier solution, similar to the human 10th Doctor in the ending of Journey's End in Doctor Who. It's still Solas in some way, but he's different, allowing him to change and become a better, different person. A completely new purpose from wisdom or pride. Now in some regard, I feel like this kind of cheaps away the whole genocide and the whole awful actions and not being able to fully deal with the consequences of his actions. However, on the flip side to it, he's reborn as something else, somebody else. He's not the same person as who he used to be. And I think that gives Lavellan a dynamic where she can grow to re-love him, love this new aspect of him if she wants to. It's an interesting idea, at least. The second one is something that has already been foreshadowed in the early moments of the game, and that is Rook convincing 
Solas. So Solas' failed attempt to destroy the Veil released malevolent gods, threatening the entire world. Yet it was Rook's fault too, and I totally get that. However, Rook was only trying to stop Solas from destroying the Veil, which would have destroyed the world. And this provides an internal conflict that both Solas and Rook can relate to. They both have good intentions, but ultimately bad actions. And so throughout the game, Rook's actions and the evident evil of Gilanan and Elganan might, in the end, sway Solas to abandon his quest. And I piece this together from hinted dialogue from Varric. Varric basically says, Solas, you rebelled against the elven gods, and that was a disaster. You then created the Veil, and that was another disaster. And now you're trying to destroy the Veil. You've unleashed two of this world's most evil gods, creating an ultimate disaster. When are you going to stop? When are you going to realise that everything you have done has failed? As harsh as it is to say. And so by this dialogue, by this exchange, by this self-realisation, is the Veil Guard setting up some kind of ending where Solas gives up his goals to destroy the Veil and realises his actions have actually led to disaster. I think this is a very logical and very likely avenue to go. And it would also be interesting to see how much influence Lavellan would have on Solas's arc. Solas, having seen the consequences of his failure, might reconsider his mission and hopefully choose a different path. Perhaps getting a retirement cabin with the Inquisitor and both going off together. Or could it be a bit more tragic than that? Could we need a bit more convincing? Patrick Weeks hinted at David Gader's original heartbreaking plan for the following narratives. What if the ultimate convincing moment for Solas is the very death of the Inquisitor or Lavellan to fully swear that what he's doing is not right? We know from the Lavellan romance the only thing that could stop Solas would be Lavellan. While that was 10 years ago, I still think that reigns true today. Next up, we have Red Lyrium Corruption. As we know, and we've talked about this one a lot, but one of the marketing frescoes for Dragon Age 4 revealed the Black City, tainted with Red Lyrium or Blight. Corypheus himself said back in the day that the corruption was already there in the Black City. It wasn't golden, the Blight, Red Lyrium. They discovered it. However, it was already permeating throughout the so-called Heavenly Realm. Now, the Dread Wolf is also depicted in this fresco with blue eyes like regular lyrium, however teeth resembling red lyrium. And this to me suggests that Solas's desperation to break free from the Black City and to destroy the Veil in his imprisonment has led him to taint himself by literally ingesting red lyrium like a red templar. And so in this potential avenue, could we see a blighted, desperate Solas at the end of the Veil Guard? This may be depending on how much he approves or disapproves of Rook's actions, becoming even more desperate as his attempt to escape the Fade and then deal with the Elven Gods himself. I could see this as like Rook and Solas having such a bad relationship that Solas is like, screw it, they're not listening to me, they don't care about what I'm asking them to do, I'm gonna just do what I must do in order to break free and destroy that veil at the very end of it all. It wouldn't be the nicest way for him to go, however I do think it's one avenue where he could destroy the veil and get what he wants. Even if it does mean dying alone in a most awful, awful way. Which, dying alone, that brings me to the next one. So, the Nightmare Demon from Inquisition told Solas that, quote, his pride is responsible for everything that has gone wrong. He will die alone. And we also know from one of the tombstones in the Fade that Solace's greatest fear is, of course, dying alone. If fan service isn't an option, maybe Solas should face his greatest fear head on and die alone. If Solas becomes a terrifying, unstoppable threat with the goal of saving the elves and destroying Thedas, and if there is absolutely no redemption or forgiveness for him, then perhaps dying alone is the best fate in this world for him. I'm not deliberately being harsh, but Solas himself said, he is on a journey of death, meaning that those around him will eventually die. It seems fitting that it should actually catch up with him too, and he should die alone if all he is bringing is death and destruction. He himself said, dying is what people do. And I do think this would be poetic justice for somebody who is seeking to commit mass genocide too. Now, lastly, on the complete flip of that, we have succession. What if we anger Solas so much with this relationship with Rook that after defeating Defeating the elven gods and gaining his freedom, he actually succeeds in his plan. Imagine Solas having his Thanos moment, sitting down to relax after fulfilling his scheme. In this scenario, Thedas would be devastated, but the elves who followed Solas would survive.
survive. Solas could then lead a new generation of elves rising up in a post Vale world and restoring the elven kingdom back to this realm of miracles and wonderful magic. Many solar villains would be happy with this conclusion, I think, having Solas succeed. However, I do need to remind you, Solas wouldn't have Lavellan join him because of what he would become to achieve this reality. Unfortunately, I think Lavellan would be left to perish with the rest of Thedas, as Solas would rather see her die than witness what he has become in order to achieve his dream. Which I think is so insane. What is he literally going to become in order to do this? So while Solas might succeed in some aspects, it's uncertain if he will achieve everything he wants. Nevertheless, given his ambition and dedication to his cause, this outcome is certainly possible. It'll be a really good bad ending to see, kind of like failing the suicide mission in Mass Effect 2, how bad could things really go for Rook if they completely screw things up. Either way, these are just my mad tinfoil theories based on a bunch of foreshadowing, speculations, and just being a fan of Solas and the fact that, you know, he is based on one of my favourite fictional characters, Doctor Who, and what happens to Doctor Who in their own romantic endeavours. I would love to know what conclusions you can think of regarding Solas. Is there anything I've missed? I know we haven't even talked about Mathal and what could happen even there, or the Blights. There are many, many avenues, ultimately. These are just what I'm currently thinking at this moment in time, based on Wesley LeBlanc's new information regarding his role in the Veilguard. Super excited to see that he's going to be more of an advisor than a villain this time around and I love that dynamic so much. But do let me know all of your thoughts down below. Of course you are already in the right place for the latest on Dragon Age the Veilguard. So much content coming your way. Make sure you're subscribed and you've got notifications on for the latest. But until the next one, I have been Jackdaw and I should go whoa 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 whoa.